ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Merch Montez, and you are actually going to easy. You know what? I know it's been a minute. I don't have any real excuses for why it's just been a long time. Besides the fact that I've been busy, a uh, new contract. But for those of you who are new, I did see my subscriber count go up a little bit. So allow me to reintroduce myself, okay? Merch Montez. I'm your IC, I'm going to easy. This is a travel nursing channel, and what we talk about is travel nursing experiences. We talk about fitness, we talk about health, and whatever else I can talk about within the realms of that content. All right, so today I'm just making a video to give you an update of how things are going with me. So let's talk about it. So first and foremost, uh, I know you saw the little cameo. There is a new car in the mix, V8. But that's neither here nor there. Just know that we're making moves. But you didn't come for that. You might have. But um, on to what the point of this video is: is to give you updates on the travel nursing that I am currently on. So. Uh, I'm halfway into the contract. It's 13 week contract. Uh, if you didn't know, I, I did 21 weeks at the hospital prior to this. After the 21 weeks were up, I continued to do PRN until I found another contract that I wanted to um, sign up for. So this one is a pretty pretty nice hospital. I think it's slightly more um, advanced than the previous hospital that I was at. Um, I only say that because they have more, how would I put this? The skill set that you would need at this hospital requires you to be a little more advanced than the previous hospital. I think that's maybe a better way to say it. The reason being is because, for example, some of the patients they take are ICU patients. Now they don't have an ICU. So if you're on the med service unit, well then that means they go to you. So you're gonna need to know how to deal with intensive care patients on the unit. Also, there are telemetry that they use here. Now, the previous hospital that they used, they did use telemetry as well, but it wasn't on a consistent basis. Here at this hospital, you're gonna use telemetry like every day. So if you don't have the telemetry skills needed, you're gonna definitely have to brush up on those skills and actually, I went to a class today that was specifically about telemetry. I felt like I did really need it, so I'm glad I got it. Now we got a book to kind of give us a, you know, a reminder of how telemetries or how the telemetry strips are supposed to be read, how to count the pulse, how to um, identify the different problems that could go on with the heart or go wrong with the heart so so if your telemetry skills are not up to par i encourage you to do some some studying maybe take a little course if you have to to brush up on that because if you're a travel nurse eventually you may have to float to a unit that is a telemetry unit and you want to make sure that you are on point with that our travel nurses are, pretty, are known for floating they're known to be able to go to different units and perform at a high level so Definitely don't go to sleep on those telemetry skills. You know, you want to make sure that those are on point. Uh, what have I done thus far that maybe I didn't do in the previous hospital? Um, drips. They are pretty big on drips in terms of uh, IV medication. So be okay with doing that. Uh, it's nothing, nothing to be scared about. Uh, you may end up coming into contact with medications that you've never put on a drip before. However, uh, there you have enough people or you have people that are very familiar with drips and very familiar with certain skill sets that you're going to need so you, you you really don't have a problem when it comes to new things and things that you've done like that before there are people there that will, are more than willing to help you to accomplish the task uh, another thing that I had to do that I haven't done often was the adenosine um IV push. Um, story time. 
So with this, you have to be very careful because this medication is used to treat irregular heartbeats. So it's used to treat arrhythmias, right? So if you maybe give too much or push it the wrong way, you can potentially stop the heart, all right? So when you are about to give this, but you, you gotta have the doctor in there, respiratory therapy has to be in there. You of course have to be in there and the crash cart has to be in there. Now, when I did this, I also had the charge nurse in there. Was I nervous? Not really, only because there were enough people in there that I felt like there was the knowledge was there. Like if something went wrong after I gave the adenosine, the knowledge was there to be able to maybe, you know, hopefully bring that patient back if the heart stopped and wouldn't do what the intended thing to do was, which was put that heart back into a normal sinus rhythm. So it was an SVT, a supraventricular tachycardia. It was is what was going on. So another example of why you need to know your telemetry strips, you need to know how to read them because you gotta you've gotta learn how to notice an SVT because that could be potentially you know, life-threatening if gone unassessed because the pulse can be up to 150 if you're not noticing it, or if you, didn't, if you don't catch it. So what I ended up doing is just uh, every every day at 10, I think more so on the weekdays, I never worked on the weekends yet. Every day at 10, there's a meeting with all the uh, different specialties. So like, you know, therapy, case management, the doctor, respiratory therapy, the nurse, and we discuss uh, the different updates and the, the plan of care uh, with each patient. And so I brought it, I brought it up in, in the meeting and that's how we I came up with the need to use it in the scene. So that's another thing that I like about the hospital is that they have a meeting at 10 every day. And you're able to talk to the doctor, you're able to get with the therapy, you're able to get with the case management, you're able to get with nutrition and pharmacy, and you come up with the things that need to be done on the patient. For example, if night shift got a new patient and they said, this was going on, uh, need to handle it. So on the day shift, you, there's a doctor there 24 seven that you can go and talk to. Now, the previous hospital, there wasn't always a doctor on the set or on the scene to talk to, so you might end up calling him. I, for one, like to be able to walk up to the doctor's door and be like, hey, um, such and such is happening. You know, what can we do? And a lot of the doctors there are really good about going ahead and, and writing new orders and getting things started so that we can go ahead and, and correct the problem. Now, here, the doctors are a little different. They, they rotate, so these doctors do locums which is kind of like what travel nurses do. They, they, they create their contract or they uh, take a certain amount of weeks or days or months and they, and they work them and they're there 24 seven, they have a bed, they have food to eat and everything they need to sustain themselves while they're there for those months. And when the contract ends, they float out and a new doctor floats in. So, you know, you're gonna deal with different doctors, but however, it doesn't matter doctor that you deal with what matters is the care of the patient so that's another thing that i had to do uh, it's, it's very exciting because I'm, I'm able to learn more things i'm learning more things that's only going to set me that's only going to set me up for future success when I, when I go to an even bigger hospital and have to do even more critical things because eventually i do want to get some icu some more icu experience Eventually, I do want to land in someone's ED or someone's ER and give it a form at a very high level uh, without having to second guess myself, without having to be nerve, a nervous wreck. You know, that's that's eventually the mission to continue to to build on the knowledge that I already have and become better than my current state. Because, hey, the only way to go is up, as we say, because it's very true. And as you know, uh, well, you don't know, so I'll tell you. Uh, I did get my compact license. Those are in full effect now. So if I wanted to go to a different state and practice in a different hospital or, or a bigger hospital, practice in a different specialty outside of the state, I can now legally do that. My only thing I have an issue with is why California isn't on the bandwagon. Like California isn't one of those states that's in that compact contract. So uh, California, only way I can go is by way of a COVID assignment because then I have temporary access to perform work in California until the contract is up. In the meanwhile, I would have to get a COVID, uh, I have to get a California license in order to perform over there 
or to uh, to practice over there. So I think that's a a real downer for me. Now, would I get a license over there so that I could work? Yeah, of course, most definitely. Because my one of my ultimate goals is to eventually go to California for my vacation weeks and work and be on the beach in California. I'm also going to do that in Florida. I also want to do that. Well, I just want to go to maybe Alabama, do a little work there. But well, we're not there yet. But this contract ends April. Uh, the decision as to where I'll go next hasn't really been decided. We're, we're, the agency I have is a wonderful agency. Like they treat me well, and they always look out for my best interests. Always making sure I get the best contracts that I can possibly get, and putting me in the best unit or specialty that I'm looking for, and giving me the hospitals that could offer me the best. Uh, orientation, education, and hey, that's what's important. Sometimes not all. The, sometimes not always about the money. Sometimes it's about which agency is really taking care of you. So I don't know where 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 I'll go after April. But if I stayed at the agency that I'm currently with, wouldn't have much regret because you can't always find good agencies. And if you do find good agencies, keep them. All right. So that's a lesson, to you new grads. Find a good agency you want to keep that agency work with them for a while if at all possible all right well that's pretty much my update um i'm, I'm trying to be more consistent i know i fell off but i've been working you see i even uh even grew out some hair not a full beard but if i waited a couple more weeks yeah you probably see a, a beard right here come from me working so much but um maybe also i want to mention the adjustments that we've been making in COVID. Well, because of being in the pandemic, okay, you, you're taking your temperature. Every facility you walk into, you gotta take your temperature. Every a nursing home I, I walk into with the, my current agency, I have to have a COVID test every week in order to work at those high, those nursing homes with the older patients, which I understand because that's the, um, this particular crowd are the ones that could possibly contract the COVID virus and it'd be detrimental to their health. Like, seriously. It's the younger generation that may not, it may not affect as bad, but the older generation is the ones that you really want to be careful when you are dealing with COVID. So I can understand the COVID test every week because you want to make sure that you're negative before having direct dealings with people that may be positive or people that who haven't contracted the virus yet. Each facility, there's a 10 day um, isolation I think that's the new regulation, CDC regulations now is 10 days. It was 14. So if you come back from an appointment, you're going to be isolated for 10 days and they're also going to check, uh, do a COVID test on you. And after 10 days, if you show no signs of no symptoms or what have you, you are able to go back into uh, population or so to speak, you know, come off from isolation. Um, we're always wearing the mask. So you got the, uh, the face shields that I've mentioned and previous videos that we have to wear, or you can wear the goggles. You gotta make sure you cover your eyes. There's the N95s you can wear. Some hospitals will let you do the K95. And you also have the, um, I think level three masks that you can wear in uh, hospitals. And of course, you gotta gown up if there's COVID. Gown up, wear you know, the full on flesh outfit, um, to the hairnet down to the, the booties. You got to put those on because you want to be as protected as possible. But that's pretty much what's been going on these past six weeks. I think I did make a video in between, you know, uh, I think it's been like maybe two, three weeks since I made this another video. But that's pretty much it, guys. If you want, if you want to continue to get updates and you want to continue to do or continue to hear the the stories that I've experienced. On this contract, I've got plenty. I can do um, Crazy Story Part 2 if you want. Like, I could per technically say this is Crazy Story Part 1 with the identity because I actually didn't stop the heart, which I'm glad, but I did reset the heart. All right? So let me know if you want a Crazy Story Part 2, and I can just keep going. Crazy Story Part 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and just turn this into a series if you want me to. I can do that. But stay tuned for the next video, okay? We're going to start popping them out. All right. Until then, like, comment, subscribe, the usual. Continue to help me grow. Now, I still need to get to at least 5K, you know? I don't feel like I'm doing something like get to 5K because I'm trying to teach you guys a couple of things or two or just show you the ropes as you begin your travel nursing career. All right. Till next time.